In this video, I want to introduce the concepts of Bayes factors and marginal likelihoods. And to introduce these two concepts, we're going to be thinking about the circumstance when we are doing model comparison. So the idea here is that we have two or more models which we could possibly use to describe a given phenomenon, and we would like to choose between them, or we'd like to say which of them fits the data better. So thinking probabilistically about this, one way to sort of frame the problem would be to say, well, let's calculate the sort of posterior probability that we ascribe to model one, conditional on the data that we collect, and we can compare that with the posterior probability of model two, given our data. And this is just in the circumstance where we've got, let's say, two models that we want to compare. But how can we calculate either of these terms? Well, actually, it's not that difficult if we realise that each of these terms is essentially a sort of posterior probability, as I've kind of been saying. And in that circumstance, what we can do is we can use Bayes' rule to calculate this kind of conditional probability. So for the first kind of expression here, the probability of model one conditional on our data, we can calculate this using Bayes' rule, and we just get the probability of model one conditional on our data is equal to the probability of data conditional on model one, I'm just going to write m1 here, just because it's a bit cumbersome to keep having to write model one, times the probability of model one divided through by a term, which we're just going to write the probability of our data. So what are each of these terms? Well, this first term on the numerator here is what we define as being the marginal likelihood of model one. And I'll explain how to calculate that in a second. The second term here is our prior probability that we ascribe to model one. And in the circumstance where we have two models that we are choosing between, the probability of model one is just equal to the one minus the probability or the prior probability that we ascribe to model two. Finally, this sort of term on the denominator here is also a marginal likelihood, except now it's the sort of marginal likelihood over both models. And again, I'll explain how we calculate that in a second. But starting off here with the numerator term here, the marginal likelihood for model one, how do we actually calculate that? Well, it turns out that to calculate this, we need to sort of think of another application of Bayes' rule. And it's the traditional one that we use in Bayesian inference. And so in Bayesian inference, typically what we're trying to do is we're trying to find out the posterior probability or probability density for some parameter vector theta conditional on our data. And that's just equal to the likelihood, the probability of our data conditional on theta times the prior probability of theta divided through by the probability of our data. And implicitly, by writing down our sort of Bayes' rule for inference, we're typically conditioning on a single model here. So after each sort of data term here, I could write comma, you know, model one, say. And similarly, in each of these terms, I'd write comma, model one, and here it would be conditional on model one. And similarly, this denominator term here would be conditional on model one. So now what we see is that the denominator of Bayes' rule is that thing that we're trying to calculate here when we use another application of Bayes' rule to calculate the posterior probability of model one given on data. So using Bayes' rule for inference, how do we actually calculate this denominator term? Well, it's a bit tricky, but essentially what we do is we're going to be calculating the probability of our data conditional on model one by integrating for a continuous parameter vector or summing for a discrete one the numerator of Bayes' rule. So that's the probability of our data conditional on theta and model one times the probability of theta conditional on model one, our prior term integrated with respect to theta. And essentially by integrating here with respect to our parameter vector theta, what we're doing in effect is we are marginalizing out 
our theta dependence from our numerator, which is why we get a marginal density on the bottom here, which doesn't depend on theta. And also note that this integral here, whilst I've written it as a univariate integral, if theta is a parameter vector, in other words, I've got a model with lots of parameters, then this will be a highly or high dimensional integral here that we're doing, where the number of dimensions of our integral is equal to the number of parameters that we have in our model. And actually that's some of the difficulty behind calculating marginal likelihoods because calculating high dimensional integrals in general are difficult to do. So we've now described how to calculate the marginal likelihood of model one, which is this term in the numerator, but I haven't explained how to calculate this denominator term here. Well, the idea is that this is the marginal likelihood of our data across both models. So essentially it's a marginal density where I've marginalized over the model choice or choice of model. So the idea here is that the probability of our data or probability density of our data is equal to the probability of our data conditional on model one times the prior probability of model one plus the probability of our data conditional on model two, in other words, our marginal likelihood of model two, and times the probability of model two. And importantly, this denominator term here is the same whether I'm working out the posterior probability of model one given our data or the posterior probability of model two given our data, because it contains contributions from each of the models essentially. Okay, so how do we actually use these things that we've calculated to do model comparison in this kind of framework? Well, the idea is that what we could do is we could calculate the probability of model one given our data, as I've kind of shown above, and we could divide that through by the probability of model two given our data. And just using the right hand side that we calculate here at the top, this is just equal to the probability of our data given model one, in other words, our marginal likelihood of model one, divided through by the probability of our data conditional on model two, times the probability, the prior probability of model one, divided through by the prior probability of model two. And the reason that we've kind of left out our denominator term here is that because it's the same across both models, it's cancelled. So essentially what we've got here on the left hand side is this is the kind of odds for model one versus model two. This first term on the right here is what we call a Bayes factor. And a Bayes factor is just defined as the ratio of the marginal likelihoods for the two models that we're comparing. And then this final term on the right here, as far as I'm aware, doesn't really have a particular name, but it's just the ratio of the priors, the prior probabilities that we ascribe to each of the models. So now that we've defined what each of these elements are in our kind of formula here, I want to talk about some issues with using this kind of framework here, and particularly this kind of odds thing here, to compare between models. One of the main sources of difficulty with this is sort of difficulties in calculation. And those are explicitly to do with the fact that we need to calculate marginal likelihoods. An issue with marginal likelihoods is that they are inherently difficult to calculate. And that difficulty in calculation comes from the fact that we're having to do a very highly sometimes multi-dimensional integral or, or multi-dimensional sum to calculate them, but also because of the fact that the way in which the two terms that we're integrating or summing over interact with one another, that integral is especially difficult and it's especially pathological. So that's, that's part of the problem with uh, marginal likelihoods. They're very difficult to calculate. Another issue with them is that they're very sensitive to our choice of priors for each of the models. So that would be our probability of theta given model one, say. So importantly here, I'm not talking about these terms here and here. I'm talking about, you know, in Bayes' rule for inference, the priors that we ascribe to the parameters here. 
And the problem with marginal likelihood is that it can change significantly as we change our priors on our parameters, even if those changes to our priors on our parameters don't actually affect the posterior particularly much. And to me, this kind of sensitivity is not very preferable for a model comparison framework, explicitly because of the fact that I don't really want changes to my priors that don't affect my posterior at all to affect significantly the posterior probability that I ascribe to each of the models. Another issue with kind of calculating these odds here is that the fact that we have to ascribe our prior probabilities of model one versus the probability of model two. And whilst this might seem like an unfair criticism given that in Bayesian inference we always ascribe prior probabilities to things, in practice I found that it's actually very difficult to come up with sensible ways of ascribing prior probabilities on models, particularly when you consider that we might be comparing model one, which is a relatively, let's say, simple model with relatively few uh, parameters, with model two, which is a relatively complex model. Surely in this kind of circumstance, we might want to ascribe less prior probability to model two because it's more complicated than we would to model one. But exactly how much less probability should we give it? Even if we do what a lot of people do and they just sort of set this term on the right here to one, so they ascribe exactly the same prior probability to model one and to model two, I still find that there are issues with using the kind of basis factor here to do model comparison. And explicitly it's to do with the fact, well, what is the sort of cutoff for saying I prefer model one over model two? Surely if I calculate a base factor equal to 1.0001, which meaning that I very, very slightly prefer model one to model two, then I wouldn't really be able to say conclusively that I prefer model one to model two. But let's say instead I calculate a base factor equal to 1.1 then do I then prefer model one to model two then? Possibly, possibly not. You know, if it's 10 or if it's 100, exactly where is this threshold where I say I prefer model one to model two? So that's another issue with using this kind of Bayes factor framework to do model comparison in my view. In my view, and my view is kind of echoing that of Andrew Gelman, the correct way or a better way to do model comparison is via sort of measures of predictive accuracy in of out of sample data. So those are things like WAIC and leave one out cross validation or just cross validation in general. And to me, that actually provides a much more nuanced way of doing model comparison because you can select your cross validation kind of data sets to echo the eventual use of your model opposed to the kind of Bayes factor framework, which is very rigid in the way in which you do model comparison.